Hey guys, this is Pastor Bruce. This is my third try. Okay, first try, noise. Second try, phone falls off my broke uh, stand. So we're gonna try again. Okay, so I'm I'm packing up. I'm actually in, in uh, outside of Sturgis, South Dakota, uh, at the Wheaton College camp. As you see, this background here is all uh, I'm sticking it to a window <laughs> so I can talk. Um, trying to get, got to go back. Got to be at work tomorrow night. But I just want to. Get this out there and get up to you real quick. So, I um, I've been thinking about David this morning, and I've studied David over and over. Um, David, King David, is uh, he he has been my mentor. Um, you know, three thousand year uh, gap between us, but I have I have looked at his life and I've looked at his life, and, and first is his name, and his his name is David, which means beloved. And I want to tell you something. You are beloved to the Lord. He loves you. Your name is David. Okay, whether you're whether it's uh, whether you're a girl and it's named Davida, uh, I, I don't know. But you are beloved. He loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his only begotten Son. Listen, he loves you. So if you got up this morning and you say, you know what, I failed here. I failed here. I failed here. Just let me tell you. He loves you. He doesn't quit loving you. He doesn't love you because of what you do, because David didn't always do the right thing. He loved David because he loved David. And uh, he loves you with that same kind of love. I mean, he's forgiven you. He's removed your, your sins as far as the east is from the west. So just remember that. First thing is, is that he loves you. Second thing is that David had some circumstances in his life, okay? David, um, he, he was he was out doing what his dad told him to do, okay? Um, he was watching the sheep, and a bear came. And I want to tell you, when I looked at this years ago, and I looked at the word bear, and I tried to figure out what it all meant, but I, I came up with this, and this is, this is my interpretation it, it, for me at that time and, and for me now. That bear that comes in our life, that comes from a word of kind of sloth, or, and it's very easy for us just to be, you know, I just give up. I'm just, you know what? Everybody else is doing this. Nobody's doing anything. I'm, I, I just give up. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna enjoy. I'm gonna, uh, I, I'm not gonna try to be a Christian. I'm not gonna try to, to be clean. I'm not gonna try to do this. I'm just gonna give up. And that, that, that slothfulness, that just be like everybody else. Just, just sleep in. Don't go to church. Don't read your Bible. Don't study. Don't, don't disciple people. That, that, that's a fight that we all have. Fight, and that came against David. But the reason David killed the bear was not for bear meat. It was not so he could show it, look, look, I killed a bear, okay? What he did is he killed that because it was destroying the sheep, okay? If you're out there this morning and that slothfulness is coming against you, I want to speak to you in the name of Jesus. He said, rise up, O man or woman of God, and be what he's called you to be. Beat that slothfulness back. Get out of bed this morning and get after it, okay? Second thing came was this was a lion, <laughs> and lions. Uh, I'm here at the Wheaton Science Camp, and they have a, a stuffed mountain lion over there. It's about the size of my German Shepherd. It looks like it's like about a, ninety pounds, and it's up on the deal. And I was looking at it this morning, and I'm like, "Wow, that's a big cat." And as I was getting my coffee and as I was praying, I was thinking, you know, that, that lion is fear. And I want to tell you something. The, the enemy will put fear on you that quick. I'm afraid what they're going to think. I'm going to afraid that I'm going to be able to pay my bills. I'm afraid that, that I'm going to get sick. I'm afraid. Listen, listen, don't walk in fear. Walk in faith. God says that you've got everything you need to do everything he's called you to do. And you're right. Uh, I heard a testimony this morning um, that a, a man has been uh, right, right this moment on an aircraft on his way to, to uh, New York to do an interview with, with CNN about a, a shooting that happened. And he was the guy was requesting prayer for him. It's his, his friend. And uh, and here's the deal. The, the guy asked me, he said, hey, am I good enough? He says, no, you're not good enough. But in the power of the Holy Spirit, you have, you'll be able to say everything and do everything that you're called to do. You think I've got enough sense to do what God's called me to do? That's a ridiculous idea that God would choose somebody that already has everything they need to do because if he didn't, why would he need us? 
Listen, we bring him glory. We're just cracked pots, broken vessels. Let the light shine through, man. Don't let that fear keep you from being the man or the woman God's called you to be. Listen, don't let slothfulness, don't let fear. And as you look out there on the plane this morning, I'm looking out over some beautiful property. As you look out there this morning, there may be a giant out there. You see, after he beat the slothfulness, after he took, he beat the fear, then what happened is that this giant showed up. His name was Goliath, and he was big. He was big. And the, the, the established order of that day was Saul, and I love the description of Saul. He was head taller than everybody else, and he was a really good-looking guy. And uh, so he was the tallest guy there. So it would have made sense, since he's the tallest guy there, he's God's anointed for him to go out there. And a lot of times we think, well, let the church do it. Let this person do it. Let the, this guy's a good speaker. This guy's a good singer. Listen, no, listen, David, rise up. Davida, if you're a girl this morning, listen, rise up. Stand up and look out there at that Goliath. Because my favorite part of the story is how David killed Goliath. Listen, he sent word through the authorities and the authorities brought him in and said, well, listen, we want you to do it this way. We want you to go to school and get a master's degree. We want you to, to be, uh, we, we, we want you to go up through our program. There's nothing wrong with programs. There's nothing wrong with being ordained. I've been through that process. There's nothing wrong with that. God calls you to do that. Listen, he, he goes. but I'm calling for the Davids this morning, for the Davidas this morning. They say, you know what? Saul tried to put that, that, that spear and that armor on him, man. And he said, this doesn't fit. This doesn't fit me. When God called me to the ministry, all I could think about was white socks and black suits. And I was thinking, oh my God, no, please. Okay. And he's called me to something else. Okay. But here's the deal. He, your ministry will look like you look just with God shining through that, through the Holy Spirit. So he said, I can't do this. This doesn't fit me. But what he ended up doing, listen carefully. He goes out there with what he's used to. He goes out there with his sling and five smooth stones. And guys, I want to tell you, he stopped at the brook, he got the stone, and then it says he ran to the battle. He ran to the battle. Let's get up this morning. Let's shake these chains of fear and slothfulness off ourselves. Let's run to the battle that God has prepared for us because there's Goliaths out there that are destroying the sheep. They will destroy the sheep. What are you going to do about it? What's he called you to do? What's he called you to be? Has he called you to, to make payments on something you need? Is that what, is that, is that, you're going to stand before the Lord and say, God, I had the highest handlebars of anybody in Sturgis. Is that what God's called you to be? I've got the shiniest motorcycle. I've got the, I've got this, I've got this. Listen, what has he called you to do? Listen, he's called you to feed his sheep, to rescue his sheep, to be the men and women God has called you. Listen, let me tell you what happened. He knocked him down with that rock because he says, I come in the name of the Lord most high. He knew where his covenant power came from. Oh man, Goliath screamed and hollered, oh, we're going to, we're going to, they're going to eat you this and we're going to, the birds, the air, all that. No, listen, none of that happened. He's talking trash. David preached a quick sermon on, look, I'm God's and he's going to kick your hind. PG version. And then he slung that rock and hit him in the head. He fell down. And then he took his own sword, the Saul's, excuse me, Goliath's own sword and cut his freaking head off. Listen, that's what God wants to do through you. He wants to take the enemies, what the enemy thought was going to be used against you. He wants you, he wants to, to take that sword and that sword be what you use to destroy the enemy who is destroying the sheep. And then everybody jumped up by their box holes where they were afraid. They all rejoiced together. They all began to kick some Philistine hind. Is that what happened? Absolutely. And God was glorified. Get up. Wash your face. Anoint yourself. And go out there to the sheep. Take care of the sheep, feed the sheep, love the sheep, tend the sheep. 
He's called you to. If you love him, get after it. Don't stand before him and say, man, I had the nicest car you've ever seen. That's great, man. Let me ride in it. I saw a 59 Caddy in Sturgis yesterday going down the road. Black. I loved it. I, I wanted it. <laughs> I saw some of the coolest stuff up here. Custom stuff. But you know what? When I stand before the Lord, it ain't going to matter. I'm going to go get back out there on my Road King, which I had called the church bus. And I'm heading back to Missouri. Get up. I love you. Pastor Bruce, Bruce, Kim Beeler, Facebook, theoldlawdog.com.